Hi everyone. Welcome to this video. Welcome to the Sky Mule zipline installation video, which is a long awaited video, sort of a monumental, pivotal point on this channel, on the journey to completing those builds uh, at that location. If you've been around long enough, you will know the significance of this and you'll know why it's so important. But if you're brand new here or relatively new here, then you're probably not really that familiar with things. So I thought that it would be a good idea to just quickly give a rundown on everything. Hi, hello, my name is Michelle. I am married to Steve. We have six children and I've given birth six times. Actually, we have six rescue animals, five dogs and a cat. We have no children. We have two properties. We have this 10 acre piece of land here, which is where our home is. This is home. This is also where I have my portable sawmill, the Woodland, Woodland Mills HM126 band sawmill. So when I refer to being home or when I'm around the sawmill, this is where I'm talking about. We also have a 20 acre piece of land that is on a lake that is approximately one and a half to two hours of a drive away from home and is primarily accessed on non-legal roads. So it's not the easiest property to get to. It's quite remote. That is one of the reasons why it is so challenging for me to complete my builds out there um, because it's just so dang hard to get to. So the 20 acres of land that we've got there, we purchased nine years ago and it was raw land, no roads, no trails, no structures on it whatsoever. It is such a stunning piece of property and there are a few different lovely viewpoints on that land, one halfway up and one near the top, which is the one near the top is the one that we have been building that tiny little cabin on, the cabin on the cliff. And then over the last couple of months, I've been working on building a little shed out there as well. That location where the cabin on the cliff is and the shed is extremely difficult to access in terms of getting materials down there. So I've talked about it just being so far away from home is one of the challenges that I'm sort of faced with as to why it's taken me so long. Um, the other thing is, is getting materials down to the location is the other issue. So as of up until now, Steve and I, primarily me, Steve helped a little bit, but for the most part, I've been the one taking the materials down there, be it lumber or tools, any kind of supplies needed, either armfuls, walking down on foot, or I've been sliding things down, tossing things, um, rolling things, somehow maneuvering and manhandling all of the materials required to, to build down there. It's been such um, a physical challenge to do it. It's so steep that um, everyone was always suggesting a zip line. My uncle had sent me a link about this company in Switzerland that makes this zip line that has an air brake in it specific for this type of thing. So we didn't know about that. Once we knew, we contacted them and purchased the Sky Mule. They sent it to us and yeah, so we finally have it now installed. And this should make the remainder of those builds quite a bit easier um, to just, you know, time-wise and also just physically easier on my body to not have to carry all that stuff down. The installation itself really was not that hard or time consuming. Um, it was pretty straightforward. It was the amount of work, the prep work really, that took a long time. And Steve and I thought that we could get it done in one to two days, but it really actually took, it took us four days. We used four days anyway to, to do it. Without further ado, let's get into the installation. So day one was more or less lots of logging.
it's like 2 p.m. Always a late start to the days out here. It takes so long to get out here. We had a nice little camp for Scout. Pretty girl, little bandana on. Your little cape, your cancer survivor cape. Little doll. Such a struggle. It's so steep and we're just tripping and slipping and falling constantly. And all of this stuff. Tree cutting is done for a bit. We're just gonna try and feed the cable down, getting the line of sight. I'm glad you finally put those ear defenders on. Uh, I'm hoping they come deaf so I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> you sassy little thing. Steve did all this cleanup. We had to change routes. So we were gonna be going down this way, but we actually have to go on this side of this big tree. So having to recut some things and we will obviously be, we'll be having to come back tomorrow, but that's okay. Clyde decided to take a wander a couple of kilometers away and I don't know, almost 100 meters down the cliff, the steep mountainside. So at some point I did have to spend, I don't know, an hour, over an hour to go retrieve Clyde. Oh my God, it's like a cliff right here. It's not really that visible on the camera, but I am not going down there. Thank goodness for those GPS collars, those Garmin Astro 900 GPS collars. They are lifesavers when you got three hounds. Danger Ocio. Now this was Steve's baby, this was Steve's project. So he definitely did all of the work. He did all of the chainsawing, all of the logging, all of the kind of cleanup, debris, making sure the trails were clear and all that sort of stuff. My job was to film him, to film it, and make sure that you know he had all the things in his location, some safety gear. Um, 
Steve is insulin dependent diabetic. So I was, you know, making sure he had glucose and whatnot in order to function and work continuously and be productive. Um, I also was taking care of the dogs and making sure that everyone was safe and that no one was going to get killed as best I could manage. Here it is. Working up the sky needle. Finally. Yeah, we're gonna drill into the rock face, put two bolts and a sling, and then uh, hook up the cable. Good. For the sky needle. Good. What time is it? About five, a little after five. Okay. If it doesn't matter, the height in terms of like, getting something attached, then... I think it's probably it right here. Cut that off tomorrow. I mean, we'll have to tighten it. We may have to take some more trees down. Yeah. No, that's the shot. That big tree will come down. Those three will take down. Mm -hmm. Good morning. We are back. Day two. Steve is just down getting his chainsaw unstuck. He was cutting a big tree down yesterday and it got stuck. So we kind of just called her a day at that point. And I just shuffled off the stairs a little bit more so we can get down a bit easier. And yeah, cut a few big trees down, clean up a little bit, get the wire up and tensioned. Actually, you have to bolt down below still, but. Not so much cutting the trees down, it's the cleanup. It's not the little hard part. The time consuming part, I should say. It's lucky that I didn't get the camera on in time while he was cutting that that tree down because this close this this close to a disaster trying to find a new husband yeah I would have certainly been on plenty of fish later tonight it's 
Steve is cutting some trees in the line just up there. And little Miss Hannah <laughs> has been at this pile. And there's a nest. So probably a pack rat. Looks like a pretty tame rat's nest to me. I bet you it's a squirrel or something. In my experience, rat's nests usually have a lot more things like garbage and colorful things. And there's lots of things laying around that they could pick at to take in their nest, like those red straps and stuff like that. So my guess is that it's a squirrel's nest. Hannah is a little rodent dog. Anyway, as you can see, it's kind of dangerous, so I'm having to supervise her here a bit. She will not leave it alone. Richard Deer. So I was like tidying up around the cabin site and where I'm building the shed. There's just lots of garbage. Not lots, but a bit. Trying to tidy and organize it a little bit. So Steve didn't tell me that he actually went ahead and did this. So anyway, um, anchor bolts in there. little bit of cable hooked into here and Steve is just up 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 there um, hauling the cable back up because we changed the line so we're just gonna reroute the cable down here and hook it into here So we rerouted the cable, it took both of us actually to do that, but Steve brought it down and just put it in this thing. What is that thing, Steve? Some sort of winch made in Switzerland. So that is to tension the cable. Good start. Branches. Yeah, I just cut them. There's a really nice birch tree that we were hoping to save, but it's in the way. <laughs> In all of this, in seeing all of those trees, there was a few trees that we were really hoping to save. There was one birch tree that, a beautiful birch tree that I was really hoping we could keep standing, but it was right in the way. And that had to come down and just a couple of really nice big fir trees. And yeah, I felt really, I feel really sad about that. And I sort of have this feeling of anxiety that I'm looking at all of this wood, all of these trees down, thinking how can I possibly use all these things now and what can I use them for? And I really 
really want to find the best way to use that birch tree. I don't know, does anyone have ideas? Steve and I actually kind of entertained somehow hauling it up, cutting it into eight or 10 foot sections and somehow hauling it up the mountainside and bringing it home here for me to mill on the mill or, and then I can make flooring out of it or, or what. Anyway, you know me, I try not to, I don't like to waste the wood and just looking at some of that stuff. I, I'm hopeful I can find ways to use it as best as possible. That tree's gonna have to come down. Oh. A few more trees gotta come down. Womp womp. This is taking a lot longer. And day two, we realized that we really do need one more day. But because day three landed on a Saturday, we thought that we would take the opportunity to spend the night at our cabin down, uh, the main cabin on that piece of property. So we would spend the night on Saturday there. So we kind of broke up the remainder of the work um, on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Here is the start of our stairs. <laughs> it's hard to see it on camera, just how far up they go from here. But it just goes, where's my finger? Oh, there. Way up there. This section is... 350 stairs all the way up this way and we tried to leave Scout and Scout had a hissy fit so we are just no. oh careful bud I don't think he's gonna go. yeah and that's okay if he wants to go back Anyway, he cried and cried and cried. So we let him make his own let him make his own decision. You can stay, Scout. It's a big journey. Scouty, it's too hard for you, Scout. He's freaked out by the stairs. Got him on the stairs. It's hard. Hard to leave him. Hard to bring him. But at least if we do it once with him, he can decide if he wants to try and do this ever again. As I'm sitting and editing this, I'm getting to the point there where Scout is going up the trail, where we're going up the trail and Scout's going up the stairs and he's struggling. And um, I wanted to mention um, the irony in the situation is that here we were so worried that he was going to have such a hard time getting up, the, getting up those stairs and the remainder of the trail. But um, once he figured out the stairs, then he was good. He was just really freaked out about them at first. But we got about two thirds of the way up the trail Clyde and Norton take off. Unfortunately, I didn't put the GPS collar on Scout because I didn't think that he would even remotely be interested in taking off. But sure enough, as soon as Clyde goes, Scout is really determined to want to go wherever Clyde is gone. So Norton eventually goes back to the cabin. He's pretty consistent that way. Like he knows how to get back there. 
But Clyde, I don't know what happens to Clyde. He just gets lost in translation and he just doesn't remember anything about how to get back to where he was or to find us or anything or whether he's trying to or not, I don't know. But so he ended up traversing his way down, you know, off our property on someone else's property down the mountainside. And we were hopeful that Scout was following Clyde, but we didn't really know. And I feel confident no matter what that Scout would find his way home because Scout is really smart that way, like really smart that way. He can find his way back anywhere and has done that several times. But so just the irony is that, yeah, sure enough, when we get back down to the cabin in the evening time and I cook dinner, Steve decides to go in the truck to go retrieve Clyde because he's a couple, three, four kilometers away. So he gets in the truck and goes and gets them. And sure enough, they're like way down the lake on someone else's property, going around their cottage, maybe trying to find something to eat. But yeah, sure enough, Scout was with Clyde. So it's just funny because, you know, like time and time again, Scout just proves us, proves us wrong. He just proves how strong and determined he is. I mean, if he had four legs, he would just be unstoppable. But it's just hard to see the footage. It makes it seem like we're, you know, cruel to him to put him through that. But Trust me when I tell you, he really wants to do all these things and he's really, really mad and sad and disappointed if we don't take him on stuff. He cries and whines and he was throwing himself at the cabin door. So we just thought, you know what, let's just let him do his thing, you know, because eventually one day he really isn't going to be able to. And the reason why we got all of these dogs is to give them a good life and let them experience things that they never would have got to experience if we didn't adopt them. We wanted to come up and redo the bolts at the top um, and just reroute the cable a little bit. It actually needed to be a little bit higher than what it was to clear the first part of the section that it's going to go down. And so we got a couple more anchor bolts. And so we're just going to do that. So Steve just loosened off the cable and then tomorrow we will come up and bring the, the blue, the burning barrel. We'll set that down as the maiden voyage, right? Yeah. Yesterday, we came up to re-drill, uh, put a couple of different anchor bolts in to get everything a little bit higher, um, but the, the battery died on the hammer drill, the Hilti drill. Um, it's like really hard granite, I guess, and for whatever reason, that one battery died really quickly, so we couldn't finish, but... Um, 
So that's what we're gonna finish off now. And we should be able to launch our first launch. <laughs> yeah, it was a really nice morning. We had a good night at the cabin and the water is really low. The lake is really low. So we could walk along the beach uh, and it's really sandy at the water line right now. Whereas normally as the water comes up, it's really just rocks and you can't really walk. So it was kind of nice this morning. Grease. Yeah, it's got grease all in it. Oh. Is it bad? Yeah. Oh yeah. Darn. To put, I was gonna put stuff in there. Oh. Hmm. So the fishing line was recommended to, as a way to get the sky mule back up. So basically we'll reel it back up with the fishing rod. You gotta attach it some way to the sky mule. Okay, we're all set. I think this is going to be a disaster. I just think all the wood is going to fall out. So you can see here's the fishing line. No, I think it's just too heavy. So this isn't gonna work. I have to take the line off and just have to carry it back up. Okay, so that's it. Um, that was all we could send down on the final day. Uh, that's all the time we had. That's the only thing we really had to launch anyway. So as you can see that it moves quite slowly with that spool on because the spool is really light and 
the barrel with the wood, although that wasn't that heavy, it was going at quite a faster pace. So I'm not sure if, I'm not sure how the air brake will work and activate um, with heavier loads. So we really obviously have a lot more trialing to do and you know, tweaking and stuff like that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope um, it's gonna be exciting to launch a few more things down there. And my door has to go down there. I think we wanna make sure that there's no glitches before I send something valuable down. Be kind of cool to get some some better footage maybe a camera on the on the goods going down that might be kind of fun so anyway that's it you guys it's a wrap on this video i just kind of finished editing it and it's a little bit long so i apologize but um four days kind of all crammed up into one video so thank you all for watching i will see you soon in another video take care bye